Hey guys, this is Brandon from Sweater Cat Designs, and in this Inkscape lesson, we'll learn how to turn a picture of a hand into a bloody handprint. To start, let's pan to the left some so that the page here doesn't get in the way. To pan, we can hold down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. Now let's use the squares and rectangles tool here to create a rectangle for the background. Let's make it black. Okay, next we need to import an image of a hand that we want to use. To import, we can click this button up here. The image I'm going to use is this one right here. If you want to use the same image to follow along, I provided a link to it in the description below. You can also use a different image, but just make sure there is plenty of contrast between the hand and whatever is behind it in the image, as this will be important for the next step. Okay, when we have our image ready, we can double click it, then click OK here to import the image. We can use the select tool to move it over here. Let's hold down the control key, grab one of these scale handles, and scale the image up some. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is use the trace bitmap dialog to convert this image into a vector. To open the trace bitmap dialog, we can right click the image and choose trace bitmap. Okay, and here we want to be on the single scan tab and have brightness cutoff chosen for the detection mode. Down here we can see a preview of what the result will look like. I don't want this part of the arm in the image, and I want a bit more detail on the hand, so I'm going to raise the threshold value up here some. 0.65 looks pretty good. Also, the parts in black here are what will be vectorized, and the parts in white will be cut out. This is because the hand in the image is brighter than the background, and the brightness cutoff mode basically cuts out the brightest parts. We want the opposite of this, leaving the hand and cutting out the background. And to do this, we simply have to check invert image here. That's what we're looking for. If you happen to be using a different image with a background that is brighter than the hand, you probably won't have to invert it. Okay, now we can click apply and wait for it to finish, and now we have a vectorized version of the hand. We can go ahead and delete the image now, and close out the trace bitmap dialog. If we select the hand, we can see from the bounding box around the object that we might have some extra tiny particles around the hand. To get rid of these, we can switch to the pencil tool here, and draw a rough path around the hand, Then go back to the Select tool, hold Shift and click the hand to add it to the selection, and go to Path, Intersection. Now the bounding box fits more nicely around the hand. Ok, let's make the hand red. I'll choose this red here. Then we can move it onto the background, and click this button up here to bring it to the top. Let's also rotate it some by clicking it, then grabbing one of the rotation handles, and rotating it counterclockwise about that much. Alright, so at the moment, the edges are a little bit too jagged. To smoothen them out some, we can go to Path, Simplify, which will remove some of the nodes. Let's simplify one more time. Next, to create some blood dripping down, let's first zoom in on an area where we want to start by putting our cursor there, then holding down the Control key and scrolling up the mouse wheel. Now we can switch to the Node tool, and find a segment in the area without too many nodes, like right here, and we can double click it to insert a new node. Then we can drag the node down some. Let's drag out the node's handles to round the end. We want to keep the handles mostly horizontal. Let's also drag in these segments here to make it thinner near the middle. And we can readjust everything until we have the look we want. Now we can find another segment like here, double click it to add a node, drag the node down, and adjust the curves. Let's create some more.
If dragging a node pulls down too much of the path, like here, we can undo with Ctrl Z and simply add another node next to it and drag down that node. We can also add blood dripping down from some of the fingers. Okay, so right now the dripping blood is too smooth compared to the rest of the handprint. To make them more jagged, we can use the eraser tool. Okay, so first we have to select the path, then let's activate the eraser tool here. At the top, we want to click the second button for cutout mode, which lets us erase out parts of paths. We want to set the width to something pretty small, like 3, and we want the edges to be jagged, which we can do by setting trimmer here to something high, like 20. Now when we click and drag, we get this jagged red line, and when we release the mouse, any part of the path that the red line touches gets cut out. Let's continue with the rest. We can also make the width bigger and cut through some parts of the handprint if we want. Alright, that's how we can create a bloody handprint in Inkscape. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.